I grew up on Long Island, New York, in a town called Brentwood. It was considered to be the poor area of Long Island. We were a single family home growing up. It was just me and my mom and my brother. Brentwood was a very diverse town. Uh, in, my, in my school, our friends were very diverse. It did not matter what color my friends were in primary school. But when we got to high school, we started to group up by color. And I found that to be very, very sad. Friends that I had in grade school were no longer my friends in high school because we were supposed to be in our own groups. And, and I remember having a profound sadness about that. And then when I got older, we had a neighbor down at the end of the block who made a racist comment that was not just ignorant, but it was vicious. My mother never expressed anything like that. So it was foreign to me and it made no sense to me. So for as early, from as early as I can remember, I, I lived with both diversity and racism. And there was never a time where it changed me. It just changed my point of view of the people who said it. And I'm, again, grateful for that. I'm grateful that, that when I heard those things, I didn't believe, as a young girl, didn't believe those adults and instead questioned it and understood how, how ignorant it was. So those early experiences shaped who I was later as an adult. And at some point in time in my early adulthood, I created my own personal mission. And my personal mission included justice for everyone because I could never understand how anyone could view different people different ways based upon, for instance, the color of their skin. So what sort of drove me to become an attorney to begin with was my love for justice and, and how I have, have always had a passion for justice. And then when I ran into YWCA and I saw their personal, their mission, which is not just empowering women and eliminating racism, but includes liberty and freedom and justice for everyone. That aligns so closely with the personal mission that I had made for myself that I knew that that was the right organization for me. I think the most important change that can be made for women and people of color is for everyone to use their voice in a constructive, positive manner, but use your voice. I think too many people often don't use their voice because they're either afraid of making waves or they think in their head, if I say that, people are going to judge me. People are going to uh, not value my voice. So I think the number one most important change that we can make is to use our voice, but not in a negative way, not in a disruptive way. And I, I, and I know other people disagree with that and feel like disruption is very important in the movement. But for me, I think the most powerful way to make change is through positive voice. I am Maria Crimi Speth and I am equal, I am powerful, and I am unstoppable. <laughs>